Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship on this All Saints Sunday and a a warm welcome to those of you who are visiting with us and a reminder to please take the registration card, uh, fill that out so we know that you were here and communed with us this morning. Uh, Just a couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, It's All Saints uh, Sunday and it's a day in which we remember those uh, who have who have died in the past year in our congregation, but also uh, those that we keep in our own hearts and our own families that have passed uh, as well. Uh, During uh, the offering, you'll see in that part of the service, we will have a choir anthem. Following the choir anthem, I will invite you to come forward if you would like to light a candle uh, for one or more uh, saints uh, in your life that you uh, remember today. Uh, please feel free to take the time to do that uh, here this morning. Uh, Just a note about OWLS, November 12th, and our guest speaker is Abdul Rahim Yassir. Uh, We're going to listen to him talk about life in Afghanistan, and uh, also Ramona Klossmeyer, who uh, did a presentation a week or so ago, will be here as well. Uh, So I ask that you RSVP for that, and it should be a good luncheon that that afternoon, morning, afternoon as well. Those are all of our announcements. Again, welcome, and I invite the congregation to stand as we, on this day, remember the gift of our baptism together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. And through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us now with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their Worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. 
Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. For the Lord has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place? Those of innocent hands and purity of heart who do not swear on God's being nor do they pledge by what is false. They shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek you, O Lord, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Truly the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. The second reading is from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the eleventh chapter. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? 
Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the gospel of the Lord. seated, please. There's a German psychologist by the name of Eric Erickson who created a theory to really demonstrate the stages of psychological social development from birth to death in our lives. In a long life's journey of psychological development, he writes our eight stages, the last of which begins around the age of 65 and continues on towards death. The last stage, according to Erickson's theory, involves reconciling a tension between looking back on our lives as one of integrity or one of despair, somewhere along that continuum. Because it's in this final stage that humans, for the very first time in their lives, have an opportunity to look back on the journey in which we've lived and sense either a deep sense of integrity, meaning, and wholeness in our lives, or along that continuum there might be some opposing sense of profound despair as well. And maybe it's the despair of a regret or some unresolved issues in a relationship. Perhaps it's guilt or shame or blame. These are just a few of the dynamics that can lead to despair as we look back on our lives. There's a sense of tremendous despair in our gospel lesson that we hear this morning out of John's gospel for this All Saints Sunday. And that sense of despair is quite palpable, really, if we enter into this text. And we really hear the anxiety that's shared by those sisters, Martha and Mary, upon the death of their brother, Lazarus. There's despair in the disbelief of these disciples, perhaps in some of the Jews who were gathered around that community as well, who question what Jesus might be able to do. And there's despair when they thought that Jesus was, of course, late for the action, that he should have been on scene much sooner so that he could have done something about this. This despair is summed up in the words that the sisters share with Jesus when he eventually arrives after four days. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If is the key word. We might add, if only, or what if that had happened. Because those are words of despair that enter into our conversation. Philosopher Soren Kierkegaard writes about this story and the death of Lazarus And he writes it in terms of the frames, in terms of human despair and his work, sickness unto death. 
And for Kierkegaard, the ultimate despair is the despair of Christians who first believe in sin, in particular original sin. We know what that means, being born into this world, into the context and environment of sin in which we cannot escape on our own. This is quite despairing if we think about it. And it's despairing if we might come to believe that there is nothing that anyone can do about one's own human condition as a broken and sinful human being. And of course, it's despairing when in our lives we might experience things like total helplessness, a feeling that it There might not be anything that we can do on our own to redeem ourselves or to make that situation that we might be in any better for our lives. Mary and Martha, of course, sense this kind of total helplessness and despair when Jesus doesn't arrive until the fourth day. Why is the fourth day important? Because this is the day that they believed when any activity of God was no longer able to happen. They believed that God might be able to act right up until that third day. But that fourth day, the fourth day was a lost cause. The fourth day was a day, of course, of total despair. And this is a day when they felt like there was nothing possible that could happen at all. Lazarus was beginning to stink, and the situation smelled even worse. We might reflect on our own when the last time that each of us have maybe experienced despair in our own lives. When was the last time that you were a part of a situation or a circumstance that just flat out stunk? Maybe it was a time when you thought that the statute of limitations of God's activity had passed and there was nothing left for God to do in that moment, that it was the fourth day. Maybe that situation was a broken relationship. Maybe it had to do with your personal health or someone else's. Maybe that despair was part of your grieving or upon the death of a loved one. Whatever the situation might have been, or perhaps continues to be, if we're honest with ourselves, we have all been there as human beings. I think we've all been in dark places where we've doubted, or wondered, or asked, what if? And of course, we've witnessed despair in the news these past few days. Despair that comes with feeling helpless as people gather for worship and a shooter enters in. There must be some sort of despair in the midst of these people who are fleeing political violence. There's certainly despair as parts of our nation are impacted by hurricanes and flooding. Nothing certainly they could do in this situation. We have our own as well. And when we look at such situations, perhaps our own, and wonder where in the experience, perhaps did we go wrong, what did we do wrong, is usually the first question that we ask. What if? Or we quietly imagine if only we had done this or that, or perhaps been a better person in that situation. Barbara Brown Taylor puts it best this way, and she writes, We are all dreamers, but dreamers have fallen upon hard times. We belong to a people whose sense of reality is much more limited. We have been schooled in things like science and philosophy. We have learned to trust what we can handle and prove on our own, she writes. And she goes on to say, and we have been taught to think, not to dream. And we have lived long enough to watch many of our dreams die hard. Only saints and children still believe that their dreams can come true. 
And then she goes on to say, quite pointedly, the rest of us are adults who know the difference between fact and fantasy. Our dreams rise to our lips and we tamp them down again, remembering how often we have been disappointed by them, reminding ourselves that there is real work to be done in the real world where dreams cannot bandage a wound or buy even a loaf of bread. Taylor, of course, illustrates this tension between dreaming and believing and despair. Or perhaps she describes the difference between really believing in the possibilities of God on the one hand and on the other depending exclusively on the limitations of ourselves in the world that we live in. When Jesus raises Lazarus from that stench of the tomb, he changes, remember, the stench of a narrative, a cosmic narrative, not just a situation locked in time, but really a reality that busts open this reality of possibilities for our world. The death and despair no longer have the last word. And in the raising of Lazarus, Jesus transforms this narrative from one of despair to one of dreaming about the astounding possibilities of God's activity in our lives and in our world even today. After all, Jesus miraculously in the story demonstrates that there is no statute of limitations on what God can bring back to life from the dead. There are no limits on what God can bring back to life if anything that might be perhaps stinking or dead in our own lives. Remember, for God, anything is possible. And what was, what were those words of despair of those two sisters? They said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And those words become what? Those words turn into, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Friends, this is called faith. Last Friday was the inurnment for Tom Miller. It's been well over a year since his death, but we finally were able to lay him to rest at the Omaha Veterans Cemetery, National Cemetery. And what a beautiful day that was. And one of the stories that I'll never forget, because Tom is a saint, I'll never forget that when Tom was diagnosed with lung cancer from his exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam, I'll never forget visiting with him and Gloria shortly after his diagnosis, and he said, Pastor, this is a win-win situation. I said, come again? In my own mind. He said, this is a win-win situation. I'll either beat this and keep on living, or I'll be with my Father in heaven. And instead of despair, Tom in that moment showed a great strength and hope that can only come through the gift of faith. He chose in that moment to dream about what God would now make possible for his journey. And in hearing Tom say those words, I look to learn something about faith as well. As we remember the saints this weekend and that transformation from despair to faith that Jesus gives us in our baptism, we remember what a powerful message this is for each one of us. And for me, as we light candles, as we remember those names in our hearts and out loud this morning, this isn't just about believing what happens to us and our loved ones when they die or when we die. 
This is about giving witness to God's promises for all of the saints, for you and for me, and our calling to live in that freedom of those promises every single day of our lives. After all, how would the saints in your lives, whom you remember today, want you to continue to live? What would they encourage you to unbind and to let go of in this world? And how might they dare you to dream the possibilities of God's presence through the rich gift of your faith? Friends, there's great integrity and great freedom in finally letting go and believing in the win-win situation of trusting the saving power and transformative love of the one who calls each of us to live in the confident hope that his kingdom is near, always near to us. This is our good news and the gospel for sinners and saints like you and me forevermore. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we on this day remember those saints who have been such an important part of our lives, an important part of our faith journey. And we give you thanks for the gift of those people whom we remember. We give you thanks for the promises that you've shared with them and with us in the waters of baptism that you indeed have made each of us saints. Help us to share that righteousness, that light of Christ again with others, and to live each day as if it were a win-win situation, knowing and trusting in confidence and hope in your love for our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.
us confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, let us offer our prayers for the church, for the world, and all in need. Let us pray. Lord God, sovereign of all creation, draw us into your presence. Transform us to be a holy people. Bless us through your word and holy meal to show your uncommon love to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Move us to reinvigorate polluted waters and air, renew foul fields, revive natural habitats that have been destroyed. Open our eyes to the bounty that you have given to us and inspire us to tend to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, fill our public servants and we who elect them to office with your wisdom. Let your justice flow through our governments and our institutions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Unbind those who are burdened this day by illness or grief or suffer in body, mind, or spirit in any way. We lift up to you this morning Deb Hysack, Carol Bowley and her family, Gil Gadzikowski, Jim Olmstead, Donna Walter, Maxine Wingy, Marilyn Girard, and Jan Morse. And Lord, we lift up to you those loved ones who we hold now in our hearts. Wipe away the tears of those who cannot see your life through the weight of their affliction and be with those who are experiencing death or journeying toward death this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen and bless this congregation's ministries of outreach, of healing and hospitality, and make us eager to receive those whom you send to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bless you for the lives of the saints who now rejoice in your salvation face to face. Join us with all whom you have made righteous and preserve us in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold all things in your compassion, O God, and bring us into your life through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn and share that peace with one another.
approach it by sharing our gifts and our offerings. Be seated, please.
invite the congregation to please stand. Remember us, Lord Jesus, as we remember those who have gone before us in faith, who now dwell with you. For you have gathered them to yourself, even as you continue gathering each of us, sheep of your own fold, lambs of your own flock, sinners of your own redeeming. They are now in your eternal care, these whose memory we honor today. Bernice Ackerman. Tanya Zastera Ellsworth. Maury Jensen. Garland Jessen. Jerry Camp. John Klossmeyer. Barbara Liebernacht, Carl Momsen, Robert Van Meter, as well as those friends and loved ones we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, keep alive in us the hope of a blessed resurrection when we shall again be joined with all the saints in light. By your Holy Spirit, bring us to that day when we shall inherit our place with you in heavenly peace, where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. To you all glory and honor is due, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your church, in earth and in heaven, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels, and all the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. The only Lord. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table has been prepared and all are invited. Our method of distribution this morning will be pilgrim style. Um, So please come. There'll be two stations here. Be seated, please.
invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, in this meal you give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Keep us faithful to you that we with all your saints may at length celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. by the saints before us. Let us go now in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.